Good morning. We are starting with our new series of lecture that is ovulation induction. So first in ovulation induction, I will be taking the drugs. Second, I will be taking the induction for IUI. Third, for IVF. And fourth, difficult ovulation induction. So let's start with our drugs first. So before telling about the drugs, uh, I would like to ask whether you remember the physiology of menstruation. You have read it. You have uh, gone through the lecture. So uh, what was the most uh, suspicious, I would say the wave uh, of our hormone. What was that? So our ovulation induction is actually directed toward that hormone only. The drugs which we are going to use are directed towards that hormone only. Yes, that is estrogen. So, estrogen is the hormone towards which the drugs will be directed. Most of the drugs which we are going to use are either anti-estrogenic or estrogenic. So now you will be asked uh, if I want to inhibit this hormone, why I am using the estrogenic drugs then? Okay. Estrogenic drugs are used, they are called selective estrogen receptor modulator in fact. Because they modulate according to the level of estrogen in the body. If the level of estrogen is low, they are pro-estrogenic. If the level is high, then they start acting against it. Okay. And why we want to suppress estrogen? Because if the estrogen is suppressed, then it is sending a signal to the hypothalamus and pituitary to release more of FSH. More FSH means more follicles are stimulated. So that is what we are aiming at. More follicle or more follicle number or growth. Right? So the drug whatever it is has to be aimed at estrogen so that signal to the brain is changed. So we have two drugs basically in that category. One is our age old clomiphene citrate. Number two is letrozole. So we'll look at the mechanism. They have different mechanism of action. You must have heard that it is a centrally acting and this is peripherally acting. So first take the clomiphene citrate. Clomiphene citrate, uh, see the uh, ironically this drug was first in history, if you go through the history path, the clomiphene citrate drug was first invented as a contraceptive. And See, it turned out to be an ovulation induction drug to use uh, for pregnancy induction. So, clomiphene citrate, it has both the estrogenic as well as anti-estrogenic properties. The same way I told, if the estrogen level is low, it has a estrogenic effect. If the levels are high, then it has an anti-estrogenic effect. So this effect we are taking into use while using for ovulation induction. Same way, it goes and binds to the estrogen receptor. The level of estrogen in the body goes down. The hypothalamus is given a signal that you need to stimulate, send more FSH. More FSH means more follicular growth. And the same effect goes in a negative you know it gives a negative thing to the clomiphene that sometimes this anti-estrogenic effect lead to a thin endometrial thickness so this is the mechanism of action the doses and all will be dealing with the powerpoint presentation so that is why it is called a centrally acting because this less estrogen effect goes to the brain this pituitary secrete more FSH which act on the follicle so the follicle growth is increased and number is also increased number is increasing that is why in glomiphene citrate we get a multi follicular growth because the FSH level is increasing so this increased FSH level 
uh, increases the number also as well as the growth pattern okay? so you have to remember centrally acting and mono uh, sorry multi follicular growth and the anti estrogenic effect these three are the properties of chromatin citrate next take up the drug letrozole letrozole is a peripherally acting drug so peripheral means what in our case it means ovary central is brain and peripheral is ovary so in ovary what are the two important uh, cells we had read two cell two gonadotropin granulosa cell theca cell theca cell will produce androgens which are sent to the granulosa cell and in granulosa cell these androgens are converted into estrogen so what was the hormone which was converting androgen to the estrogen at granulosa cell pad ke nahi aate aromatase theek hai so letrozole is acting at this level it is a aromatase inhibitor is an aromatase inhibitor so it stops the conversion of androgen to estrogen in turn the level of androgen will increase in the body but same way estrogen level goes down and it stimulates production of more fsh ultimately you see the level goes to brain only to secrete more fsh but here the estrogen levels are going down at the peripheral level so it is called as peripherally acting drug and it lead to more of unifollicular pattern because of the local action okay and anti estrogenic effect is less that is why the effect on endometrial thickness is less this less anti estrogenic so endometrial thickness is maintained So these three points are to be remembered between chromatin citrate and letrozole. So apart from these two drugs, there are many adjuvants like metformin, low level of steroids, and all. But the mechanism of action in metformin is totally different. It is not a ovulation induction drug. That is why we call it adjuvant. It is, you know, it is acting at peripheral level. But these two drugs are called ovulation induction agents. So apart from these two drugs, uh, other agents which we use are gonadotropins. Those two are the oral drugs. Sometimes, as a sum, uh, there is one more drug uh, which we use for ovulation induction. Uh, some modulators. Uh, there are many more modulators which can be used, but in common use, we are using chromaffin citrate and. this there are uh, not many studies available on the use of other sums so better use the one which has the time tested one is gonadotropin second is gonad gnrh analog that is agonist and gnrh antagonist okay these are the three category which are used for ovulation induction gonadotropin natural gonadotropins are fsh and lh so whenever they are available in injectable form they will be called gonadotropins gnrh agonist other drugs which suppress the production of uh, which suppress the actually the uh, pituitary function it down regulates the pituitary because they go and competitively bind the receptors in hypothalamus okay they bind the receptors on gonadotrop actually in the pituitary so that the uh, signal from hypothalamus is blocked agonists are the competitive inhibitors antagonists they directly go there and block the receptor okay so that is the main function 
between uh, sorry difference between agonist and antagonist that they are competitive inhibitor imagine this is a gonadotrop in a pituitary normally gnrh secreted by hypothalamus comes and bind on this receptor imagine this is a normal gnrh secreted by the hypothalamus naturally this is another gonadotrop so what is happening when a gnrh uh, this comes on the receptor the gonadotrop start secreting fsh and lh this we are talking about pituitary so this is a gonadotrop on which we have placed a agonist gnrh agonist so it resemble the routine gnrh and stimulate the ovary so in turn what will ovary do uh, sorry gonadotrop do it will secrete fsh and lh so the gonadotrop is fold here that they, they have received a signal from the uh, hypothalamus and they start secreting fsh and lh but in a little while they realize that this is not the original gnrh and it has been sent to fullers so then it goes in the state of down regulation now this gonadotropin says no i will not secrete any more fsh and lh till i get the original one so this secretion is blocked so initial response when they are secreting more of fsh and lh is called as flare response okay so that flare flare last for 7 to 10 days so this flare effect is used in many of the protocols like short and ultra short to stimulate the uh, ovary okay. and here lies the difference between this is the original this is the fake product and now we will talk about the third one antag antag is simple just goes there and sits on the receptor now the receptor is smart here uh, sorry gnrh is smart it does not secrete any fsh and lh it is blocked there and there itself so the action is instant instant but short lived so generally when we are giving an antagonist starts immediately but it lasts for 24 hours so that is why 24 hours in case of normal antagonist there are some long acting ones which we do not routinely use so we'll not talk about them because then you will get confused so the routine ones are used every 24 hours action lasts for 24 hours once we are placing the antagonist fsh no lh no this stage is called down regulation of the pituitary so always remember this term down regulation of pituitary it is done by gnrh agonist so once down regulation has happened pituitary is down regulated so there is no good adotropin in the body no fsh no lh so what will you do if you want to stimulate this kind of situation pituitary is down regulated there is no fsh there is no lh and you want to stimulate the egg so what do you need to do then 
this we need to supply them with FSH in LH then only the ovary will be stimulated so little bit of gonadotropin roughly I will be telling here then we will take in detail in our presentations gonadotropin are broadly divided into two urinary and recombinant okay urinary is HMG menotropins HMG it contains both FSH plus LH they are derived from the urine of postmenopausal females because that has high content of FSH in them then this HMG can be again highly purified highly purified means less protein and impurities but the level of FSH and LH will remain same so it has equal content FSH in 150 it will be 150 FSH 150 LH in 75 it will be 75 FSH and 75 LH highly purified also same then there are urinary FSH these are derived from urine but they are treated immunologically to remove the LH content so this urinary FSH will have almost 95% FSH and 5% of impurities protein and LH and recombinant ones are recombinant FSH and recombinant LH they have zero impurity they have pure FSH and pure LH so this, this FSH will have no LH this LH will have no FSH and one more urinary uh, product which we have with us is HCG it is derived from urine of pregnant females and then again it is treated because the uh, HCG immunologically is equivalent to LH so it is used to create a LH surge or in very small amount we call it nano very small amount of HCG can be used as LH also to stimulate the follicular growth okay so while dealing with them just remember we are whether we are using the urinary product or using the recombinant product urinary are widely available cheaper and equally effective Recombinant ones are uh, availability sometimes is a problem. They are produced by only two or three companies and they are very high in cost. So we have to use uh, both of them. It's not that we just rely on the urinary products only. You can use recombinant. Sometimes we look at the patient condition, whether they can afford, they cannot afford, whether it will be beneficial, not beneficial. But you should always remember these are the drugs which are used. I think we can uh, now go ahead with the part 1 presentation.